Hello guys, today we have here a Alfa Romeo Mito with issues on the power steering. This is an electric power steering car and as you can know by now, on all mixed models the electronic steering uh, sometimes is problematic. So in this case I will remove the module which is the entire power steering column and take it to the specialist to be repaired. So on this case, I did a diagnosis and I have no fault codes on the module itself, but the other modules, the control model for the engine, the body computer, have uh, failures for communication with the power steering uh, system, okay? So before we begin, you want to make sure that your openings are good enough. So you want to open up a bit here the window because once you disconnect the battery, the glass cannot go down in order to open the door safely. The same thing here on the other door on the passenger side and on the boot being an electrical release, you also want to make it open just like so in case of you or the customer has to access here the boot. And so like in all things electric, you want to release here at least one of the battery cables. On this case, on this car, it is very simple. You just push here on this button and you pull it out. Sometimes you have to wiggle it a bit because this is a beach car. As you can see, corrosion is very much present, very much present on the brakes and on the rear ones. Really, really Really rusted, guys. And so, that being said, let's take out here the power steering column. Now, here on this car, you can do this in several ways. Yes, you have to take out all of the thing out. And not always, you have to take out here the steering wheel itself. So, let's carry on. Let's do this the simplest way possible. Make sure the wheels, the front wheels, are straight with the car. Make sure your steering wheel is centered enough. You can start by that bolt over there. It is a Torx 12. If you need to move the steering wheel, you can, to use an extension for example, you can do that absolutely, but then after removing the, the bolt and before pushing up the shaft, you have to put the steering wheel back on the correct position, on the straightest position possible. Okay, now my steering wheel is uh, is uh, straight and I can pull up here the shaft. Most modern cars have a special keyway that stops you to put this in any other position than the one that should be. But just to be safe, let's do this as it was a infinite adjustment. So the shaft being telescopic one, you can pull it up. Okay. Now what I do next is to, is to remove the key because I have the lock on the inside and the, as the steering wheel moves, it will eventually lock. And that means that I'm never too far off of the true center of the steering wheel. Remember that this is crucial because of the clock spring for the airbag. Next we have here a series of bolts, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven uh, in there. I'll show you in a minute. I think that it's all, and it uses a 3mm X socket. Always make sure that the size of the screw is the same or not. And also the threading can be different. You can have millimeter on one side, you can have mixed threading on the other side, but I believe it is all the same everywhere. This all should come off by hand, especially to put back in. Don't do a lot of force because it will break. Next, like I always say, try to feel it. The two halves are still locked in place with the uh, tabs, but they should come off relatively well. Another thing that I usually do is to put the steering wheel column all the way extended and upwards to release me here of some space and the uh, location of bolts. Possibly you have to keep this lever here on the down position but you can deal with that. Some clicks are to be expected. In other ones, not that much. Okay, the lower part is good. Now the upper part may have some bolts. Yes, it has. Normally Fiat does this. I have two more bolts here holding up the upper cover. Just two more. They may be different. At first view, I do have access to it with my tools. Sometimes it is not possible. So the screws are the same. 
On the 156 they are not. On the 156 they are different. They are, are all different, I believe. So, okay, one more. So having can network, the wiring will be very light. I mean, the wires themselves are very thin because the, this uh, systems work with communications, not real grounds and powers and what, what not, like the old cars. So the wiring is fairly easy to remove. Next we'll remove here these side covers. So really here, you can see that you have to take out here the steering wheel in order to push up here this cover. If you want to, you can do a little bit of force and remove it, but then again to put back in is another struggle and I don't want to risk it, not at all. I don't want to crack anything, I don't want to risk it. And uh, let's just remove here the steering wheel and be cool with that, okay? And so like in most modern cars, we have back here on the side of the steering wheel a place to put in a tool Normally it accepts, like on PSA models, a, just a punch. On this car it's not like that, it's much more like the 159. Someone already t took this out, this, uh, this airbag, so the holes are already open. They come close from the factory and then you have to rip a hole on there. That is just the way it is, okay? So you want to use a medium-sized screwdriver, you want to, to get it in there and it has to be like in the, on this position, cannot be like this, okay? Just want to work it in, and it follows a path. You have to find that path. Okay, let me try to do this just one-headed. And it will go in as you do this, okay? And now you want to twist it, and, and as you are twisting it, you want to work here the airbag out. Do not do a lot of force over here, okay? You have to feel what you want to do. Now now is the time to put there the fingers, my fingers over here, and pull out this side of the airbag. Do the same on the other side and the airbag will be off. On these connectors for the airbag, I already showed you how to remove them on the other Mito or for the seat belts. The video is down on the description if you want to check that out. How to replace the seat belts and the speakers from the Mito. Okay. Next, I have here a connector that I have to yeah disconnect. I try to. Okay, so these wires will stay, these uh, yellow ones and this uh, thick black one will stay with the car and the steering wheel will go with these two ones. Yeah, I have to also pass those wires underneath that uh, white tab. And next you want to take out there the, the nut. Many of you guys want to try to ta take out there that uh, those tabs that are around the nut that is not uh, necessary, you just want to remove the nut itself with the tabs. Like I told you on the 156, how to remove the steering wheel on that, it is also done on the description. In order not to make too much force on the lock, and you feel the lock, do it with your knees, okay? All the way down, turn the steering wheel a little bit to the right, and do force, and your knees will... Or someone to, to secure the steering wheel. The idea is to not, not to do too much force on the lock. So as you can see, the nut is special and it comes out all in one unit. Now the moment of uh, whatever. It's out. Now, as you can see, my steering wheel is not straight and it will never be straight as long as it, this is disassembled. So from factory, on this car I have there a scratch mark and a point. You want to remove the steering wheel and you want to put it back together with those marks coinciding. Again, because we do not know if the shaft over there has some master keyway in order to the steering wheel to be always perfect on the shaft. And so if you do not know, you must make sure before disassemble if everything is aligned.
Now here on the clock spring, sometimes when this spring here is uh, not pressed against the steering wheel, the clock spring locks in place or just limits its movement. This one also does that, okay? But in case it does not do that, you can always tape it to the side and in this way lock the clock spring in place. The idea is not to uh, to see the perfect position of it because as you can understand this this part over here has to pass through the steering wheel and that will dictate the position of the clock, clock spring. The idea here is the, for the clock spring not to do a full turn uh, without you knowing that because sometimes passing here with your finger with your hand with your clothing it can it could do a full turn here on the clock spring as you can see if i press on the middle part it can rotate all the way okay so if you are afraid to lose the position just put a little bit of tape high visibility one uh, it's better so you don't lose the track of it even with this one yeah it just will make noise once i put back the steering wheel if i forgot to take out the tape not the cluster itself but you have to, to remove here this this nappa part and it is just clipped together with some metal clips and with your finger down on this region over here on the plastic you want to pull it back okay it is a bit stiff okay now on the other side make sure to do force around the clip area and that's it so this one goes up and now we can take out around here this lever this uh, cover cool thing on this job is you can use the seat to your advantage to have a nice uh, comfortable position you have here this top blue one this blue connector black with the blue tab okay it is very fragile so this wiring here was not well done it is there on the inside on, on that valley and it was just like so and it was pressing against there, over there. You can see the bright color, color over there. That can produce some noise. In the future, it can produce a fault on the wiring. So let's uh, do that as it should be done. For being so small, this connector is a little bit fragile. To assemble the, the original alarm systems, we have to reach that because of the blinkers. And sometimes it breaks. So again, now, Taking out here the clip for the wiring, some of it. I have another one on the back here. I can press with my with my thumbnail on there, and then with the finger, press it down and out. And now I have the two pieces of wiring out. Down here, the same thing. Next, I have here a zip tie all around the ignition barrel to prevent the wiring from scaffing on the some areas and I just want to take out the the zip tie i have a new one over here to make sure i don't forget to put a new one okay yes you can sometimes reuse that zip tie but those ones are so so simple that i just put a new one if it was a specific one those ones that you can be have a lot of access to the clip over there to that tab over there Yes, I would reuse it, but this is a very normal, typical zip tie. So, new one it is. Here on the connector for the immobilizer, sometimes it's not easy to take out. So what I do is to take out the ring itself out. It's much easier to not to damage anything in this way. Just one tab or two, and it comes out much easier. And then if you want to take it out like this, you can. But as you can see, it is a very sketchy connector. I just remove it like so and call it a day, okay? That being said, we have here now the access for the ignition barrel. Just pull down on that tab over there and that one over there. And the connector goes down. Next, we have here a bracket to hold down the wiring. This one is already broken. And uh, usually that happens as you want to take it out like so and then do a hole over here to pass through a zip tie for example to hold it down because this is the same bracket that goes to the screws of the covers next on this case i have the airbag for the knees i have to remove it so i have a t25 screw over here a five millimeter in the wrong place over there or one uh, washer missing maybe maybe 
add a washer over here. This is very odd for me. Yeah, very odd. Uh, it has one, but it is too small. Strange. Maybe the the bolt is not from there. We have one more. Yeah, one more bolt on, on there. So five millimeter one. Hold on to air, to the airbag. This one seems to be... Maybe the screws are backwards because this one has a larger washer. Maybe it's on there and the smaller one maybe on the underneath. Mm, possibly. Okay. I was thinking here about this, uh, this wire. Maybe it's not necessary to take it out, but it is what it is. The battery is off. As you can see, this is a very hefty stuff. Very big. I advise you to put this wiring to this side over here. So now we have here this connector for the power. Take down the yellow tab, push in the blue, and it's out. Yellow tab, down, and then push there. We have the communication connector. Here you go. To the side as well. Now we have here two 13 millimeter nuts, possibly two more on the back there. But I have here this uh, conduit that I have to remove to see better. 25 Torx over here. And I'll just pull it. Now I have a bolt that goes over there. Another one on the other side. 13 millimeter head one. Pull it without uh, harming yourself. This is very heavy. This is very heavy. Not to be damaged during transportation, I will also remove here this uh, command block. Just a 5mm one over here. Just uh, like so, okay. And now it will be stuck with a tab. Now it's just a matter of reversing the whole procedure. You can see here on this side that he has a master keyway. So we don't, do not have to worry a ton about that. Let me put just here just a little bit of a grease. This is very heavy, so be very, very careful with your back, with your knees, with, you, with everything. We will concentrate here on these two nuts and then these two bolts and then wiring and whatnot. Does not matter right now the position of the shafts. Okay. This middle section here is telescopic. In this section, this assembles itself from the other one, but it, there is no issue because it has a master keyway. Keep calling it master keyway. Is it uh, called like that? If it's not, tell me down on the comments, okay? And sorry about that if it is not. Now the bolts. I showed you early on the disassembly. Just a matter of putting them in. The 13 millimeter head ones. You may have to wiggle a bit to get the proper alignment. Do not tighten it all the way, not even close. Now on the other side. Make sure the shaft is not stuck anywhere. And now the bolts and the nuts are ready to go all the way to the proper spec. 25 Nm, it is enough for this. These two bolts over here, it may seem difficult on camera, but they truly, they, they are very easy to access and to do and undo. It is just difficult to show you on camera, that's it. It is in. The wiring harness is now on this side, but we have to pass it through the other side, as you can remember for creating access. It can be tricky, but it is very doable.
that's what he said okay goes like so yeah and now here on this bottom part the power for the power steering in here the com connector okay it is in everything is nice just here put in on top here the rest of the stuff before that i, I think i can put in here the airbag the lower one i think that is no problem so connector in click in uh, so now clip everything in maybe it will be easier to put it at the end because of here the the trimming for the column shaft but okay it's not a horrible it's not very difficult to do that is that now the position of the bolts i will switch them around so this one goes now for this side as you can remember it was this one and I, I think it is not correct now i think it is so hole where are you nice just a small tightening nothing too much and over here the same thing much better much better oh yeah another thing that i will do here is these cables that go to the uh, yeah to, to, to the power steering i will relocate them try to and then uh, holding holding them down with a zip tie maybe because they are in the way of your left foot and uh, it is a terrible thing to see and to feel okay now a zip tie yeah much better like this mm -hmm. very nice just to mention that i did the brakes the rear brakes on this car the discs and the pads and uh, despite the horrible looks of that because of the beach area that this car lives it was absolutely perfect in every way in terms of the hub assembly the caliper the guides was very 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 good this is the first time that those discs those rotors are being uh, replaced and the factory used a uh, antices on the, that assembly which is very 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 good very good news for the next guy so i did the same i used that uh, ceramic based grease so the car continues to have the same quality of assembly on the rear bags so nothing too special over there uh, down on the description i have lots of videos for brakes and of course a video for rear brakes okay so now here i'm drilling down this uh, tab this support for a zip tie but wait a minute do not put the zip tie just yet because we have to put down here the the stocks assembly and i have to see if this is not an issue okay so the stock assembly has here this this clamp the clamp is held down with this bolt and the bolt does not need to come out all the way and to, to put back in you just slide it in okay no biggie over there here you go now you want to see if you have space for that zip tie, that modification. And I think I do. Not quite, but I think I do. You have to slide it over. No, no, it's easy. Okay, fairly easy to do. Much, much safer to do it like so. After putting here the stocks assembly. Now do not forget to tighten the bolt. Five millimeter hex screw. Not too much, just enough. Now start to pass the wiring, very straightforward. The wiring has the kinks to do a perfect assembly. That's over, over here. Do not forget any of the connectors. Sometimes that happens. So you have one back here. Make sure they are not stuck anywhere. So one and two. This one has to pass through that valley. It was not like so click on this one and now this immobilizer we have another zip tie the original one essentially you have here the here these cables the zip tie has good has to go around here where my finger is to help this wiring not to rub on anything this is the factory assembly okay 
so like so make sure the the cutting part is on the area to not not to interfere with anything okay for the assembly it feels faster because it is don't forget that you have two bolts to put over here and there and you have to click on this area over here just with your fingers make sure not to harm yourself perfect now the two screws over here the waiting for this uh, job it, it was a little bit extensive about three weeks normally is a little bit little little bit less and in that way you can forget about stuff so make sure you have everything in pictures or in film or in very good memory <laughs> because you will forget about uh, where the things go how they go what goes first what goes last and all that stuff so now this lower part you just have some clips over here all, all around and you have the bolt holes very easy to understand i believe and it is much easier now because i do not have the steering wheel so much easier to see also so everything should be very very snug here the these uh, gaps the bolts will do just a final adjustment the bolts are not here to to, to crush any bad gap yeah okay can be a little bit difficult to find the, the holes for the, these bolts, but it's not impossible, just you have to have a, a sense of uh, feeling, you have to feel the tip of the screw and sometimes just go for it. Not much tightening is required. There are two bolts over here that, that don't want to go in. They are the ones that uh, live on that bracket. The threading for them live on that bracket that we repaired just now. And I believe that uh, that uh, support, it is on the correct placement they are the last ones seven in total on a sitting position i will put the steering wheel on i'm very lazy no it is just a matter of uh, taking advantage of your position not to be constantly changing your workplace it's just uh, i have to, i have work to do here on this position so i'll i will okay the, the steering wheel just goes on one place it has, it has just one master keyway. The nut goes afterwards, the 24 millimeter, I believe. It is X part of the nut. Do not remove these tabs. Make sure that to do the tightening of this nut without the string wheel being on that, that lock. I already show you how to do it on the video, how to remove this on the Alpha 156, 147, and GT. Now just a bit of a cleaning here on this trim because some of it be lives behind the airbag airbag time just have to correspond here the colors and uh, do the reverse of the disassembly so one pay attention to your battery to be disconnected okay two and the third one it is the ground or the horn it is a horn i believe yeah it is so it is all of the wiring is out of arm's way just some window cleaner here to clean this out nice underneath here i just have to push with my thumb over here on this area to make sure that the holes lined up with the threading and that's it just it before carrying on the wheel position must be on the most comfortable position uh, for everyone and that is the lowest possible because your arms will not go so up and in that way will not be so tired and uh, depending on the height of the person it must go all the way in or out and I usually do it halfway so halfway all the way down and if the person has some trouble with the position of the steering wheel it is easier to find a very much more relaxed position with the steering wheel all the way down being this uh, owner of this car a woman i believe the steering wheel is on the best position for her to use the car
So the next part over here is to finally take out here the lock for the steering wheel and uh, align there down there the shaft with the steering rack. Be careful when exiting the car because you can turn the wheel without noticing and in doing so you can lose your center so you have two turns, two, two and a half turns to each side, okay? So you have on zero degrees over here and you can lose that. So be very careful when exiting the car not to touch the steering wheel. And now you can down there locate the shaft. For example, with my left hand, I secure here the shaft and with my right one, I gently rotate here up here the steering wheel to, to help me to locate the master keyway. The grease over here is starting to be a difficulty to see. So as you can see, now you want to also wiggle it because of the corrosion. And anyway, here you go. Now the bolt. And now you are secure to rotate the wheels as much as you like to be able to find a new position to tighten this bolt. After this job, what is required sometimes is to do a al alignment because sometimes the position, the inner position of the steering column is lost and that requires a new alignment and or also do a wheel sensor calibration. The calibration from the steering angle has to be calibrated with the diagnosis machine. Now you can connect here your negative for the battery, but before that, make sure that your key is on the outside of the car. I like to put it on the outside because sometimes we have issues with the car locking the central lock. And another reason, even if the door is open, Sometimes the key is on the ignition and it is turned on and as you turn on the battery the ignition also turns on and that can cause a lot of issues throughout the car. Also to notice here the new brakes on the rear. These are seem they seem to be plastic discs almost okay, but they are not. They are ATE or AT brakes and pads, okay? Everything was nice on the assembly, like I told you. If you want to know how to break in these kinds of uh, brake rotors, I have a video down on the description to show you how to do it. Very easy to do. It has to click, okay? Now you wait about 10 to 5 to 10 minutes before doing anything at all. And like I told you on the video of how to replace your battery, the first thing you do before opening the door is to close the car then open the car and then open the door and then do the ignition and then drive the car and only then if you see if the steering wheel is straight, you do the alignment on the wheels if necessary and only then you do a calibration on the steering angle sensor, okay? And only then you can tell the customer the car is ready, okay? And after doing the break-in on the rotors. Make sure the stereo over here works and the code is not active. Make sure all of the functions of the stocks over here work. Linkers, high beam, low beam, presence lights, the washers, front and rear, all of the functions of the car work. Everything is working correctly. So all here the buttons for the stereo also work. So everything is good. Make sure also to adjust your clock and date and every function here on this area over here. And now we can do our test drive. Any warning lights should not be visible right now. And we yes, we have power steering. Test if you can have power steering all the way through. No warning lights are present. The windows, the frameless windows, make sure to program them. I already have a video or two for that on the description. Now, during the previous test drive, I saw that the steering was a little bit pulling to the right. Before uh, seeing anything else, I want to see if it is exactly the same pulling to the right. If not, I have a problem here with the assembly. If it is exactly the same, I just have to do a wheel alignment. Okay. About the programming or reset of the, the sensor, this car specifically does not need that but some cars do and uh, just do a normal a normal run to see everything if everything works if you want to you can provoke a, a wheel spin for example or provoke here a lack of uh, traction to see if everything goes according to plan but in fact 
everything is perfect. I just need a, bit, a little bit of AC. <laughs> this car does not have AC working. It's really hot today. And uh, yeah. Don't forget, guys, that down on the description there is a lot of stuff that can and will be useful for you regarding electrical problems and solutions. Regarding lack of power, the steering is great. Regarding crank no start, uh, so many things that can and will be useful for you. Just check down below on the description everything that I have. Also, there on the description, I have uh, links for helps for the channel if you are able to do so, of course. Okay, I see you next time, guys. Bye.